Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanel Ngu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanel Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's anything that you guys want to see on this channel, let us know by dropping us a link in the comment section. And we'll do it for you. We've got a second YouTube channel called YouTube channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0. You guys can head there, check out our weekly vlogs, and just enjoy. We've got a podcast called Diving In with Fa um, Diving In with Funny and Jesse, and we've got some amazing conversations. So you guys can enjoy them while doing whatever you're doing. You can find us on Podbean podcast, uh, Podbean iTunes, Spotify, and this channel as well. We also have a Patreon on which you guys can feel free to become members and we'll be very, very grateful. Also, feel free to check out my blog. You can find the link in the com um, community section. A uh, big shout out to everyone that's been subscribing to our channel, watching our stuff, already subscribed, um, just giving us a zoo to go on. Thank you very much. So today, as you can tell from the title, I'll be reacting to the Quran says you don't have to wear the hijab. That's something new and I'm excited to react to it. And... Yeah, I hope you guys stay blessed and a big shout out to the person that suggested this. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. The verses of hijab were revealed Dhul Qa'da of the fourth year of the hijrah. Right? And I mentioned when I teach the class about the fiqh of clothing and the fiqh of food, I mentioned that the verses of hijab were of the last commandments to be revealed after salah, after zakah, after inheritance, after fasting Ramadan, after zakatul fitr, right? After marriage and divorce, which is in Baqarah. The verses of hijab were of the very last commandments to be revealed in terms of the personal dietary laws and whatnot, right? No doubt hijab is important, but I point out that I think many of us have made hijab even more important than the salah. It's like we immediately decide instantaneously based on the hijab. No doubt hijab is important, but put it in its place. It was revealed at the end of the fourth year, not at the beginning of the first year like the salah or something. Okay, None that actually the salah was pre-hijab, excuse me. The zakah was the beginning of the first year and, and all that. And, and nonetheless, so now uh, the hijab of the Prophet's wives was extra. The hijab of the Prophet's wives was extra. And the wives of the Prophet they had to be covered not just in their personal body, but their space as well had to be covered. And this was only for the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, and this is explicit in the Qur'an. Explicit in the Qur'an. Uh, the Qur'an says, وَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُنَّ مَتَاعًا فَاسْأَلُوهُنَّ مِنْ وَرَاءِ حِجَابٍ If you ask the wives of the Prophet ﷺ for anything, if you talk to them, Speak to them from behind a hijab. And this is what Aisha is saying, that this incident of Muraysi took place after the verses of hijab. The term hijab in the Qur'an, I'm going into a tangent here, but it's something we should know, it's very important. The term hijab in the Qur'an does not mean headscarf. In our vernacular, it means a headscarf. We say, does she wear hijab? I started wearing the hijab, means the headscarf. This is modern Arabic, which is fine, not a, not a problem. Quranic Arabic, the hijab meant a physical curtain that separates the entire body, not just on your body. It's a curtain between you and the speaker. This is the Quranic usage of hijab. And this usage of hijab, according to the Quran, only the wives of the Prophet ﷺ have to wear, not wear, excuse me, have to enforce that type of hijab. As for the headscarf, the Quran references this with the term khimar. With the term khimar. وَالْيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمُرِهِنَّ عَلَى جُيُوبِهِنَّ Let them wear their khimar, khumur, plural of uh, khimar, over their juyub, which is their bosoms. Their scarves should cover their chests as well. Because the women of Jahiliya, by the way, they would wear headscarves, by the way. The women of Jahiliya would wear a headscarf. Every respectable, dignified lady would cover her hair, just like in America 100 years ago. 
impossible for a dignified lady. Only the peasants and the rural people without money, without education, they would be with her. And the same in Arabia. Every single lady of respect and of middle class would wear a headscarf. But, just like in America as well, the headscarf would be thrown back and the dresses get lower and lower. You get the point, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, no. When you wear the headscarf, cover the bosom. Right? So anyway, the point here, Aisha says the verses of hijab had been revealed. And by this we mean an extra layer above and beyond the khimar, above and beyond the jilbab, which is another Quranic term, right? Ya ayyuhun nabiyyu, ya aqulli azwajik wa banatik wa nisa'i al-mu'minina yudnina alayhinna min jalabibihin. That's another verse. So the khimar and jilbab is mentioned for all women. The mothers of the believers, the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, <coughs> the daughters of the Prophet ﷺ, and all of the women. Khimar and jilbab. And this is what our sisters wear. For the wise of the process, there's only the hijab. Now, a reason I say this, by the way, and it's very important, I know it's not directly related. These days you will hear some modernists or progressives say, the hijab was only for the wives of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is a technically true statement that is intended for something false. This is a technically true statement. It's a true statement, but something evil is intended through it. It is true. The Quranic hijab is only for the wives of the Prophet. ﷺ. But what is the Quranic hijab? It is this extra layer of curtain. Right? Whereas what these people try to say is that the hijab, meaning how we understand it, which is the khimar and chilbab, is only for the wives of the Prophet. ﷺ. And this is wallahi foolishness that shows a complete ignorance of the Quran. It's so explicit. Ya ayyuhan nabiyu, qul li azwajika wa banatika wa nisa'il mu'minina. Tell your wives and your daughters and the believing women, yudnina alayhinna min jalabibihin. They should all cover themselves with a jilbab. This is in the Quran. The word jilbab and the word khimar as well. That all believing women, all believing women, including the wives of the Prophet. ﷺ. And Aisha would wear a khimar and she would wear a jilbab, but she would also have a hijab. This lady emails, it's a really long email about how she's read that the Quran never talks about covering the head. But she says, you know, I mean, I read the ayah and I read, you know, what, what it says in Surah number 24, Surah An-Nur has the ayah, right? And it uses the word khimar, which is for veil. And I looked up the dictionary and it says things like a shawl or cover. So it doesn't never ever says anything about covering the head, right? And I start thinking, is this a common like confusion or is this just this one time email? Yeah. So I do a little digging and it's actually extremely common. Like a lot of people think that the ayah is not talking about covering wow. the head at all, right? So it's a really common confusion. I didn't know. So like one of the things I really want to do is kind of address this in a like a sane way. Like I'm not interested in getting somebody to wear hijab. That's their decision, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, if something's being said about the Quran, we have to be honest. And what is it saying? And you know, there are people who would like it to mean something it doesn't mean. And then there are people who are genuinely, they just don't know any better and they're confused about the subject. So the, the, the cool thing about Arabic, right? Is that for covering the head, just covering the head, there's like nine different words. Wow. And one of them is khimar. Mm -hmm. Right? So you have, you know, miqna'a and mighfar, and this is all these bunch of words. And it depends on if it covers the head and if it's up to here, if it's up to here, if it's up to here. Depending each on the length, the each has its own wow. kind of meaning. And in old Arabic, the word khimar, which is used in the Quran. Now, I mean, you and I know commonly we use the word hijab. Yeah. Hijab is actually not a word for head cover. It's actually a word for barrier. Like a wall could be a hijab. A curtain could be a hijab. Okay, so it just kind of got coined as hijab, but that's not the word in the Quran, nor the Arabs ever used it like that. Okay, so the word is khimar. And the cool thing about it is the word itself includes the meaning of covering the head. Like the head and then some. And it's, it's used before Islam, 
the men used to have khimar too. One of the names for their turban, if it was extra long and it went down to like almost middle of the belly, the men used to call it khimar too. And then, it's so cool, they, the, the women had like different fashions or whatever. And one of the things the women before Islam used to do is they used to have this bandana type thing that they would tie in the back with their ponytails and it would go to the middle of their back. So they wouldn't drip it in front, they drip it, they throw it behind them. That was also called a khimar. Now the Quran says they should take their khimar and throw it in front of them before their chest. In other words, the only difference is keep the khimar, but just use it. The, the head cover is already included in the meaning. Just use it to cover the front also. Right? And it should be like a certain length. That's the meaning. And somebody argues like, no, 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 but the word khimar, it, it just means shawl. It doesn't mean like head cover, whatever. It's really cool. That you, you, are you familiar with the word khamar? You know what that means? Uh, is that alcohol? Alcohol. Yeah. Why? You know why it's called khamar? No. Because it messes with your head. Uh, Khamara blocks your judgment. Khamara literally means to cover. And it's called khamar because it you know, messes with your mind. It creates a block in your mind. You're, it's almost as though your head is covered up with something. When you take khamar. We're not even talking about the Islamic meaning. We're talking about Arabic itself. Back in the day, they'd see some horses are funny colors. Like from the neck onwards, it's white and the rest of it's brown or something like that. They would say that horse is mutakhamir. It's, it's like it has a khimar on. Like how are you going to explain that as the, the, the horses don't have shawls on. It's just a length and it's covering its head and it's up to its neck and all the way down. So that's why they're calling it a khimar, you know. So like it's already in the language, but it's so unfortunate that when they say, okay, they should draw their veils over their chest. That's what some translations say, draw the veils over the chest. Well, a veil could be a shawl, it could be any kind of cloth. And it doesn't really include head covering, right? But the Arabic word does. And so I, I feel like a lot of this conf confusion comes because uh, people don't pay attention enough to the original language and how a lot of translations, they oversimplify the issue and we start coming to drastic conclusions. But I think that even if you talk about all of this, like somebody gets upset and says, who are you to tell me that I have to wear this or that? I'm not anybody to tell you anything. But what I'd like to at least for people to know is, okay, here's what the word is in the Quran and here's what it means and here's how we can understand it. If you think there's better evidence, if you think there's another meaning in Arabic, then maybe you should tell me about it. So, I don't know, maybe I should do a talk about that someday. I really enjoyed uh, listening to this and wow, it was just very, very, it's something that you want to listen to and wow, I'm just wowed by this. This thing of translating things from the original language is what makes things um, lose meaning. Also, even if it didn't have to do with religion, it had to do with tradition, I'll still respect any woman out there that covered their head or did not cover their head. Like, because of this modern world, everyone has a choice now whether to do it or not to do it. But otherwise, I enjoyed watching this video. What do you guys have to say concerning this or the people that say um, it doesn't mean cover your head, it just means maybe cover your chest? Let me know what you think. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.